This is just 10 by 14 by three and a half. Um, that's a pretty standard size. Adobe bricks can be pretty big. She said it's too much. This is, yeah, this is, yes, okay, so this is, this would be a more insulating, less mass, and ours over there is slightly more mass. Okay, is, but this is the small straw in place slip one. We were trying to figure out when to stop adding clay slip. Oh yeah, this is plenty of clay slip. Is it too much? And it tells me too that our, we could have clay slip that's even thinner, more, yeah. way more watery so to make water? it work. In a, bit, in a wet pour adobe, all you would need to do is pour it in and screed off the top, and that's all you do. That's, you don't tamp it because it's so wet, it's just like pouring it in. But when we make something like this, we do definitely um, press it in and form it because you don't want those air pockets. Okay. You want it to all be consistent. I see. You're going to try to compress it, are you? It depends what, um, what you're doing with it. But in this block, I would say we probably want to tamp it pretty well. The same with straw clay. Tamp it with your hands. With your hands, probably be fine. So it's great that we all took different approaches and we have a lot of different um, styles of, of adobe blocks here. We have some that are um, uh, heavier on the straw. One here in the middle that's almost all clay, little bit of straw, and I believe no sand, is that right? On this one middle one here? There's no sand here. It's, I mean, we've got aggregate in. Is, is, it, is it tan breeze? It's all tan breeze. Okay, so that will, that'll work great. So tan breeze with just a tiny bit of straw, and then we have some real wet mixes, and then, you know, that tan breeze and this middle one here, um, that got placed like you might place a drier adobe floor. These are more of a poured adobe, except they're very heavy on the straw, heavier than some adobe blocks that are the true poured adobe. But what I see here is a great variation in insulation and mass. So you have that really nice variety. One thing you want to remember is that if you go to do stuff like this, always, always keep track of your recipes. So we were mixing for fun. We let, this, this first batch, we let you just kind of play and mix and not measure. But as we get up later in the day, we want to have you start to really make sure that you're measuring, keeping track of what you did um, when we mix cob and things like that. Um, and then we can compare how it feels, and then you know how much to adjust, and then you keep that recipe, post it at the job site, and have things um, follow that way. When you do testing, I like to write, right on my block, or my plaster sample, what my ratio is. So I'd scratch it right into these, if possible, some of the wetter ones, you absolutely can't do that. But make sure you put it right with the block, don't have a piece of paper that flies away that you never see again. This is, a, um, this is something you definitely always want to do. Test your blocks, keep your ratios, and then beat them up after. Really give them, put them through the rigorous testing of, you know, cracking them, scratching them, and see how hard they are. Um, drive your truck up on, the, <laughs> you know, on a block, things like that. Just really test them, depending on your application. Now, um, we've been talking about an interior infill application where she doesn't need a block that's a, very heavy, necessarily, unless she wants a really good mass wall, and she doesn't have, need to have one that's very um, strong in compression. So she doesn't have to be probably quite as rigorous, and she can, um, she can choose, a, you know, a medium mix in terms of strength. But if you're going to be doing any kind of load bearing wall, you want to make sure you do a lot of good testing. So um, we're going to let these dry. I hear that Mark's going to be using these later. Yeah. All right. I want everybody's name in case. <laughs> <laughs> you can use the variety like that? Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, they're all the same size. Um, so the other thing I want to point out is when you don't fill it all the way, you have an inconsistency that when you go to build a wall with it, you've got to make up for that in mortar. And so. It's better if you get into block production to make sure that everything is con as consistent and as filled to the top of the form as you possibly can do. Should we make that one a little bigger then? Um, maybe for Mark's sake, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, oh. but yeah if he's really going to use these, um, I think these three are probably going to be yeah. fine. <laughs> so they should really be flush then with this wood. To yep. Consistent. Yeah, because think of laying them up with mortar and that's. You know, otherwise your forcing will get off. But there will still be air in between them. I mean, because they're not, that's not the perfect science. It's not exactly to the 
it'll, it'll be mortar that makes up all the irregularities. Now remember when we talked about compressed earth block, those right. come out of the press pretty darn consistent and that's why you can use a slip mortar because they're so consistent. These are always going to be more inconsistent so you've got to fill that space with mortar to make up that.